If one were to gaze upon our planet from a great height, tracing the contours of the South American continent, a remarkable feature would eventually draw the eye. Along the southeastern coastline, a vast funnel-shaped indentation appears, a shimmering expanse where fresh water and salt water meet in a monumental embrace. This is the Rio de la Plata, or the River of Silver. It is not a river in the conventional sense, but rather a colossal estuary, a place of convergence where two of the continent's mighty rivers, the Parana and the Uruguay, finally relinquish their long journey to the Atlantic Ocean. The name itself, River of Silver, is steeped in the history of early European exploration. The first Spanish explorers who navigated these waters in the 16th century, led by Juan Díaz de Solís, were met with stories from indigenous peoples of a powerful white king who ruled over a land abundant with silver far upstream. While the silver they sought lay further inland in the mountains of what is now Bolivia, the name stuck. The Rio de la Plata doesn't really split Argentina and Uruguay apart. Instead, it brings them together. On its south side is Buenos Aires, Argentina's big, busy capital city. To the north, across the wide water, is Montevideo, Uruguay's proud capital. These two capital cities, often called sister cities, look at each other across the river mouth. They're connected by a steady stream of ferries and ships that act like buses on a giant, watery road. This shared culture shows up in everything from the sad songs of the tango, which started in the port areas of both Montevideo and Buenos Aires, to the special way Spanish is spoken there. To truly appreciate the Rio de la Plata, one must first grapple with its staggering dimensions. At its widest point, where it finally surrenders its fresh water to the Atlantic, the estuary spans an astonishing 220 kilometers. This immense breadth is why, from its shores, the opposite coast remains invisible, lost beyond the curve of the earth, earning it the title of the world's widest estuary. The estuary forms at the confluence of two colossal river systems, the Parana River, South America's second longest river after the Amazon, and the Uruguay River combine their immense flows. The average outflow of water is a staggering 22,000 cubic meters per second. The Rio de la Plata is not just a natural wonder, it is the economic heartland for both Argentina and Uruguay. The estuary provides deep water access to the major ports of Buenos Aires and La Plata in Argentina and Montevideo in Uruguay. These ports are the primary gateways for international trade, handling everything from agricultural products like soybeans, grains, and beef from the fertile pampas, to manufactured goods and industrial materials. Fishing is another cornerstone of the estuary's economic life. The brackish waters, rich in nutrients washed down from the continent, support a highly productive fishery. The most commercially important species is the white mouth croaker, which provides employment for thousands of people in coastal communities. The unique environment of the Rio de la Plata gives rise to a fascinating and specialized world of plant life. In the upper, freshwater reaches, particularly within the vast Parana Delta, the landscape is dominated by extensive wetlands. Here one finds dense galleries of forests with trees such as the Cockspur coral tree or Caibo, whose brilliant red flower is the national flower of both Argentina and Uruguay. The most remarkable feature of the estuary's flora is the vast, submerged meadows of aquatic plants. These underwater grasslands play a critical role in the ecosystem. They act as nurseries for fish and invertebrates, providing shelter and food, and they contribute to the oxygenation of the water. The rich and varied plant life provides the foundation for an equally diverse array of animal life. Over 300 species of fish have been recorded here, including the magnificent golden dorado, a prized game fish known for its powerful fighting spirit. One of its most iconic residents is the Franciscana dolphin. This is one of the smallest and rarest dolphins in the world, and it is unique in that it can live in both river and coastal saltwater environments. Above the water, the air is filled with an astonishing diversity of bird life. One can see elegant black-necked swans gliding through the shallows, flocks of roseate spoonbills adding a splash of pink to the landscape, serving as a critical stopover point for migratory species on their long journeys along the Atlantic Flyway. For the people living by the Rio de la Plata, it's way more than just a background for big cities and world trade. For many years, local fishermen have gone out in small boats, using traditional methods to catch fish that feed their families. These fish provide a little income from selling them at local markets, showing how deeply they're connected to the river's natural rhythm. 
In the huge Piranha Delta, a special island culture has grown. People who live there, called Islenos, build their homes on tall stilts to stay safe from floods. They use small boats called Lancas to get around the many waterways, transporting everything from children to school to fresh produce to market. Despite its immense size and power, the Rio de la Plata faces a growing number of environmental threats. The most significant is pollution from untreated sewage, industrial effluent, and agricultural runoff. The constant dredging required to keep shipping lanes open disturbs the riverbed and alters natural water flow, threatening the delicate ecological balance. In response to these challenges, binational organizations are working to monitor the river's health, conducting regular water quality tests, and studying fish populations. Several protected areas have been established, providing sanctuary for wildlife and serving as living laboratories for environmental education and research. The Rio de la Plata is, in every sense, a giant. It is a giant in its physical scale, in its economic importance and in its ecological significance, supporting a unique and complex web of life. From its historical role as the entry point for millions seeking a new life, to its contemporary function as a hub of commerce and culture, the River of Silver has profoundly shaped this corner of South America. The future health of the Rio de la Plata will depend on our wisdom and willingness to act as responsible stewards, balancing economic needs with ecological protection. As it continues its timeless journey, carrying the essence of a continent out to the sea, the River of Silver remains one of Earth's most magnificent natural wonders, a hidden giant whose quiet power sustains a remarkable world of life, both wild and human.